Welcome to part two of My IBM Experience. Hopefully you've already viewed the first episode in this mini-series. Some of you new to IBM are learning that the Functional Rating Scale, or FRS, has categories or stages. The FRS total score ranges from 40, or best functional status, to zero or complete dependency. The IBM FRS has been shown to be a reliable and valid measure of disease severity in inclusion body myositis. These categories or stages labeled by doctors and researchers are mild, moderate, or severe, or simply stages 1, 2, and 3, and group where on a scale the IBM patient's disease progression is at the time of the latest FRS test. In a 2019 medical publication, Dr. Steven Greenberg also refers to stages in his discussion about IBM's clinical features and pathogenesis in a 2019 article. We continue this mini-series when I'm well into stage 2. My functional rating scale score was 20 in August of 2013 and well advanced from the score of 36-37 estimated at my diagnosis date. This disease has dropped my life being 90% functional in 2007 to only being 50% functional six short years later in 2013 and in some respects it seems like I had lost more than that. Some of you have asked about the progression rate of IBM and I just shared mine with you. Some of you are progressing far better than that and some worse. I might call the second stage or category of IBM as the investment stage. This was the time frame when some expensive items and some home relocation or remodeling really started to suck the life out of my wallet as the IBM continued to rob my strength, dexterity, and mobility from my body. By this time, I had realized what my future would morph into, and my wife and I had already moved into a single-level home, remodeled a bathroom, and installed a used elevator for access to the basement in storm season. What major expenses could be left? Plenty. Buying a lift chair recliner and building a new riser to set it on was next. Having difficulty of getting out of bed prompted the search and the purchase of my Transfer Master bed and mattress. During stage two, I got serious about an elevating seat on a power chair and bought one for use in my house and a new hobby I began. More about that new hobby in a minute. The bodily costs of my stage two time frame included thinning of my shoulders, arms, forearms, and legs. My quad muscles turned to gel, leaving only my calf muscles seemingly intact at this time. The loss of arm strength came to the increased use of a straw to drink all my beverages as lifting and tipping a glass started to pose problems, then grasping and hoisting a cup, even with a handle, became difficult and then impossible. Eating was becoming a greater chore, so various utensil alternatives were purchased and tried. Then the occasional getting food stuck in my throat signaled the start of some swallowing trouble. In one end and out the other, let's talk about stage two toileting first cleaning up afterwards, then standing up from the toilet. In the previous episode, we discussed the slow loss of hand dexterity. Yep, you guessed it. My IBM-affected hand lost the ability to grasp toilet paper, bend it upwards, and properly wipe afterwards. The addition of a bidet attachment on the toilet more than satisfied that deficiency. After talking to an IBMer much more advanced than I was at the time, I was informed that an overhead hoist was probably the end game device required in the long run, and jumped to purchase one that I saw on sale about a two hour drive from us. I also placed the ADA height toilet on a four inch riser that worked for a while until the hoist met its time for usefulness. I also started to use a standing tip learned from a more experienced IBMer, place my feet a little pigeon toed when attempting to stand to lessen your knees being able to collapse. I've been doing this ever since with good success. I've not said much about one of the power chairs that I purchased while in mid-stage two time frame that was an inexpensive Taiwanese made Hartway rear wheel drive that I used within my house and for my newfound hobby. And boy did it get used and used a lot. Since my furniture woodworking days were behind me, I took up metal detecting with a passion. 
I rigged up a mount for the detector on my power chair, so all my weak arm had to do was pivot it from side to side to scan for coins and artifacts buried shallow in the ground. I put on about 1,300 miles on this power chair in almost four years, mostly in off-road conditions, retrieving coins and jewelry in parks and out in the wilderness, uncovering artifacts left by our settlers and soldiers left in the 1800s. This hobby not only provided me with lots of successes and pleasures, but more importantly gave me lots of exercise. Imagine, during each two to three hour session, doing two to three hundred waist crunches and adding some resistance exercise when attempting to dig some coin or treasure. It wasn't pretty, but highlighted my time in IBM Stage 2. I really miss metal detecting now, having sold my equipment when I could no longer handle a small hand trowel in the next stage. I've been driving a vehicle since I've been seven years old. Early in Stage 2 was the time in my IBM journey when I decided to cease driving a vehicle on America's roadways. My decision was based on my leg's increasing difficulty of moving my right leg from the gas to the brake pedal. It wasn't about me though. I stopped driving before I spoiled somebody else's day if I had an accident. As you can guess, this and my decreasing mobility led to another expense, a side ramp van. Realizing the ever-increasing load on my caregiver, the addition of a power chair docking device in our van was worth its weight in gold. As my distal muscles weakened more, I required a wrist brace on my left hand just to stop it from flopping around. With the wrist brace, I was able to again lift food up to my mouth when using my liftware level eating device. Soon I required an ankle brace on the left side to help stabilize me when getting up from my lift chair recliner, power chair, or when transferring. I still wear both braces today. My right hand and fingers and their writing ability were almost gone near the end of stage two. My stage two signature was so sloppy it could hardly be read, although I could still hold the pen. In 2014, I attempted to get accepted into the Novartis BYM338 clinical trial. My request was considered and traveled twice to the Kansas University Medical Center for qualifying tests. One of the tests was to measure the kick-out extension force in my lower legs. When connected to the force test gauge, my attempts to register greater than zero were never reached. The clinicians were amazed that I was still walking and had completed the six-minute walk without falling. Unfortunately, some of the zero strength measurements or other results denied my chances to be in the study. I later learned clinical trials tend to select participants closer to the diagnosis point than I was in. Remember me talking about high-low beds in previous episodes? Late in stage two, I had to begin raising the head end of the bed to get to a seated position on the edge of my bed as well as raising the height of the bed. The large low effort buttons on my bed's remote control made that possible, even with my arms getting a shorter reach as well as much weaker. During stage two, I could still partially reposition myself in bed, although it was getting more and more difficult to handle the turn and the blankets during a rollover attempt. Okay, by now you probably feel tapped out financially and probably want me to stop all those cash register sounds. But let me remind you that all those new purchases require some upkeep, some maintenance and cleaning, not to mention periodic battery replacement. Hopefully you have a friend with some mechanical skills and tools to help you out with some of that. I learned quickly to save some money to find some battery purchase source alternatives rather than buying them from medical equipment vendors who might charge 50% more for the same functional batteries. Yes, IBM is an expensive disease, there's no doubt about it, so every savings is money earned towards the purchase of the next necessity on your list. I realize this IBM miniseries might be considered a downer, especially for the newly diagnosed. But I've heard too many IBMers say they feel so alone in this disease and have no one to help and forewarn them about what to expect in their future with IBM. In the next episode of My IBM Experience, I'll present what has changed when getting into the third and final stage of IBM to hopefully assist your planning for your futures. Press the thumbs up button if you liked this episode. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, 
press the subscribe and notification bell buttons below your viewing window. Please leave any remarks in the comments section below the screen. Sharing this video and channel with caregivers, family, and friends might also be to your benefit. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode, my IBM friends and caregivers. Thank you.